another one here. Alright guys, welcome back. And this video here is going to be part 2 of my AE86 respray series. I'm starting this video off by removing the rear window from the boot. And this definitely isn't the correct method for removing the rear window, but I was just doing what I could with the tools that I had. It ended up working out fine, and I didn't cut or pierce the rubber seal, as I was being pretty gentle with it. And it was definitely a relief when I got the glass out without breaking it. It's quite deceiving how heavy the glass is compared to the boot. It went from being very awkward and heavy to carry the boot through the house, and when the glass was removed, it was just a lot more manageable just to carry the boot around by myself. So the rust that I found was mainly in the seams, but it did break through in some areas, but it wasn't visible with the glass installed. What I ended up doing was separating the seams, and using a wire wheel, I cleaned out as much rust as I could, and I applied the rust converter on the clean metal. And the rust converter shows any rust that still hasn't been cleaned out by turning it black, and as long as there was rust converter turning any little spots black, I just kept grinding it back until all I could see was silver metal. And after I closed the seams, I knew there was probably rust in the cavity between the skin and the frame where I couldn't get the wire wheel. So rather than separating the entire skin from the frame, I opted to fill the cavity with rust converter and let it eat away at the rust over the next few weeks. The way I did it was I lent the boot up against the wall in the shed and I filled the cavity that was closest to the ground with rust converter and periodically I'd refill it as I walked past throughout the day. And it would take a few days for the converter to stop bubbling, which told me there was no more rust in that section. And I repeated the process on all the other sides of the boot over the next couple of weeks. And I was pretty confident that there was no more rust left in the boot. And once I had painted the boot, I filled the cavity with cavity wax just to prevent any future problems. So once I was finished with the rust repairs, I moved on to stripping off the acrylic paint. I used the same method as I did on the body, which was to start off with 180 grit just to remove the bulk of the paint. And I finished off with 400 just to remove the last little bit of white paint without cutting through to the factory base coat underneath. Keeping in the spirit of making sure all the bare metal was sealed anywhere I cut through, I made sure to seal it all up with the 1K primer as soon as I was finished. The edges where I separated the seams weren't perfect anymore, but rather than apply filler, the imperfections were minor enough to straighten out with just the filler primer. So when I had the body in the booth for primer, I also threw the boot in and I just got a couple of extra coats of filler primer on there and that was enough to straighten out any imperfections. So once I was done with the boot, I moved on to the front guards. And as you can probably already tell, the passenger side was in pretty bad condition. This was actually by far the worst panel on the entire car. And my car was originally 11, which is the fixed headlight variant of the A86. And one of the previous owners done the front end conversion and the front guards that they used were pretty mangled. I don't know if they were off a damaged car, or if they were just kicked around a workshop for years before they were put onto my car. But I'm stuck with them for now, and I managed to find a second hand driver's side guard in pretty good condition. So the driver's side was a lot less work, but I never found a replacement for it, and the repairs that I did turned out pretty decent, so replacing it was never a top priority. There is however a company in Japan that's remanufacturing A86 parts. And they have started making Tueno guards, so whenever I do get around to giving this car some TLC, I'll definitely buy some brand new guards and whatever else the car needs at the time. The company I'm referring to is called Restore Parts, and their website is restore-parts.com. And they've constantly been adding new parts to their online store, so it seems like these little Toyotas are just going to live forever. So the first thing I decided to do was to straighten the guard out as much as possible. And it's extremely obvious that I'm not a professional panel beater. And I'm approaching this job just like everything else I do, and that's make do with whatever tools I have and objects I can find around the farm. And once I started to get this panel a little bit straighter, I proceeded to remove the acrylic paint, much the same as I did on the rest of the car. But I came across some filler, and it was so deep that I had to break out the wire wheel to remove it all. And the filler must have been 5 or 6 mils deep. Okay, I thought I'd give you guys a quick look at the bodywork that I've been doing. I've just had to hammer out some pretty big dents here and there was like a big ripple going down the side there I haven't done my best to straighten it, I need to put a bit of filler on top now just to make it nice and smooth but I also pulled out a ton of filler out of this dent here I'm glad I did because it still wasn't straight with the filler in it I would have had to put more filler on top and I probably would have had 6-7 mils of filler to fill that dent there's another one here, you can see it in the light, it's not as bad as the other one, 
but it definitely needs some some bashing out but yeah this one here was shocking this panel is definitely by far the worst panel of the whole car I tried my best to get a new one but this wasn't any around so I'm gonna have to make deal with this one okay and just a quick video with the dent beaten out probably took two minutes yeah so it's pretty crazy for me to think just how easy it is to bash those small dents out and not use much filler but there's people out there that will just fill it and sand it back and leave it yeah so i'm obviously mixing up my own filler here and just as a general rule you'd want to mix a P of hardener to a golf ball of thinner and I'm using this U-Pole Fantastic filler it's the one that I like using most um, I just think it's it's really easy to work with it's got a good work time and um, it doesn't have like other fillers that I've used in the past to got like a real runny consistency where this one it does have more of a moldable consistency while you apply it so as you can see here I'm just mixing it together on a piece of cardboard I just I just like to use scrap cardboard or um, parchment paper or something that I can just throw out and I'll, all I'll have to do is clean my scraper after this but I'm um, thoroughly mixing it through here and about to apply it and as you're about to see even though I've made quite a lot of filler here this is probably as much as I would make in one go I'm only going to apply a very light skim coat by the time I thin it out you can almost see through it and then on top of that I'm going to be sanding it back so it's only going to be a super light skim coat of filler here and I, un I understand that I'm not going to get this perfect just with body filler what I normally do is I'll get the panel as good as I can with uh, body filler and then it gets to a point where I'm not going to get it any better and I'm going to have to just apply a primer or in this case I was using a epoxy primer the epoxy primer is just going to seal up all this filler and base coat and then give me like a level base to sand down and flatten and the epoxy primer that i use is actually like a filler primer too so yeah just working through here and adding a bit of filler through this uh fender flare and this is pretty much in real time i haven't cut too much out of this video and you can sort of see the work time that i have here and then i can still really shape the filler nicely and like I said, I'm going to sand most of this back, but one of the tricks that I use here is I like to get wax and grease remover and that bottle there is just a bit of wax and grease remover on a paper towel. And as you can see here, I just, in order to clean my little plastic scraper here, I just use a bit of wax and grease remover and it just makes it, makes light work of cleaning this stuff up. I'm obviously going to throw out that piece of cardboard, but the scraper I'd need to use that again and the wax and grease remover, it just gets rid of that tackiness and it just makes it easy to clean as you can see there in real time i've just cleaned that scraper off and i'm wait this is all just while i'm waiting for the filler to dry and um i haven't cut much out here but that filler that's on the guard there it's pretty much starting to dry now it'd be hard to the touch but what happens is there's going to be like a sticky film on top of that filler and all that's happening is the a harden is just uh having a chemical reaction with the filler and the chemicals are just coming to the surface. Obviously, it just needs to air out. But what I do here is I put a bit of this uh, wax and grease remover on a paper towel. And I'll just wipe off that sticky film. Once I do this, it goes from being... It's already like tacked off. So it's already like cured to where it's, where it's kind of hard. But wiping it down here, it makes it so it's smooth. And I can. it's, not, it's no longer sticky. And now that I'm going to come back and sand it. Uh, because I don't have to wait for it to cure completely, it ends up being a lot easier to knock off a fair bit of it. Like it's easier to sand, it's softer. Whereas if you were to just let it cure by air, it would take a bit more work getting that amount of filler off. But yeah, as you can see there, I flattened it out pretty nicely. You can basically see through that filler. And I'm getting this panel to a point where I'm just going to put a bit of epoxy primer over it, seal it off. And then I can really start focusing on shaping it and making it nice and smooth. So, yeah, I found that you can get a panel like this to a certain point and it's not perfect. But like if you keep sanding it, you're going to start going backwards just because the 
the filler that you put on, it's going to sand a different rate to the the paint that's on the panel. And then obviously the paint and the filler is going to sand at a different rate to the steel. So it gets to a point where you're not actually going to get it any better. And you really just need to just seal it. You know, like what I'm using is an epoxy primer. It's like a filler primer so that when I am sanding it and shaping it to make it as smooth as possible, um, I've got a consistent base to work with. So right now, you can see I'm just feeling it with, with my hand there and uh, pretty much just made the decision that, okay, I'm, that's about as good as I'm going to get it. So so I did the same process with the uh, driver's side guard, uh, just a bit of a rinse and repeat, just like I've been doing on the rest of the car. This thing was actually painted in a two-pack. It was like a gold two-pack and it was quite thick. So unlike the acrylic that I wanted to take off just because it was a low quality paint, I wanted to take this gold paint off just because it was so thick. But yeah, it was pretty cool to see that uh, this guard was off of a red car. So um, yeah, secondhand guard, you don't know what you're going to get. So it's pretty cool to strip back the layers and see what's underneath. And just like the rest of the car, anytime I cut through bare metal, I make sure that I seal it up with like a 1K primer just to protect it from the elements before I finally get the chance to seal it up with it, a proper epoxy primer. So that'd be it for this video guys, it was just a quick one today. But stay tuned for part 3 where we get a first look at my spray booth. And I finish off the interior prep work before giving the interior a lick of paint. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.